President, please be seated. The chamber is now back in session. For this afternoon's proceeding, the chamber will have statements to be read. Those are the testimonies of witnesses which have been made before the Office of the Co-Investigating Judges, and the Chamber decides not to summon those witnesses in person. Regarding the reading of the records of interviews of witnesses, Mais nous allons donner lecture du procès verbal de leur audition. The chamber will assign the graphier to read those statements in the Khmer language de ces and en for Khmer. French and English. Pour le français et l'anglais. The chamber has examined the existing le translation and the chamber has found some discrepancies in those French and the English languages and the chamber would like to advise the parties to the proceedings to listen to the simultaneous interpretation in two English and French while the statements are being read. And the transcript of the statement and the interpretation into English and French will be reflected in the transcript. Et cette interprétation apparaîtra dans le compte rendu d'audience dans les langues françaises et anglaises. The Crafier Sel Sakobuti can now uh, read the records of interview of the witness Q. Check with the document number D28-2 EAN 0016-36-36-2-41. The Graffier. Office of the Co-Investigating Judges. Criminal case file number 002-1408-2006. Investigation number 001-1807-2007. The year 2007, the months of November, the 28th day at 8.30 a.m. at Kampong Chinang province. We, some Surya, investigator of the extraordinary chambers being assigned by regulatory letter of the co-investigating judges dated 21 November 2007, noting the law on the establishment of the extraordinary chambers dated 27 October 2004, Noting Rules 24, 28, and 60 of the Internal Rules of the Extraordinary Chambers have recorded the statement of Kiu Ches, alias Bo, a witness, who provided the following information regarding his personal identity. Kiu Ches, alias name Bo, born in 1963, this person declares that he could not read and write Khmer language, but he speaks and understands the Khmer language. Therefore, the original of this written record is written in the Khmer language. We advise this person that the taking of this statement is being audio or visually recorded. 
This person told us that he had no relationship with the charged persons and civil parties. This person took an oath in accordance with the provisions of Rule 24 of the Internal Rules of the Extraordinary Chambers. We notified this person of the right against self-incrimination in accordance with the provisions of Rule 28 of the Internal Rules of the Extraordinary Chambers. Question answer. Question. Question. To begin, Pour could you describe your background before 1975? Response. Réponse. At that time, I was living with my parents. parents. And after the death of my parents, Ensuite, we lived in poverty together with three brothers and one sister. Enfants, Question. Was there any problem before the revolution movement entered the village? Response. Réponse. The difficult problems were crawling and lying down to escape the bombs. Our brothers and sisters were separated. The war was spreading from one day to the next, and one had to choose the right time to go out to crash the cows. I went to stay in the pagoda. My second brother was a monk. The war continued to spread. My brother left the monkhood and stayed at our house after 1975. I was moved to live in a children's center. The villagers' houses were burned during the bombardment by the Americans. Later, they had me join other children in a group. It was the cooperative chief who had me join, and I had to join it with the others. I do not know when the cooperative organization started. I kept on hearing that he was the cooperative chief. A solidarity group was created after the liberation, and then the cooperative was established. The cooperative leaders were those who used to be leaders in the village. Question. Why did the village chief in the Lonor regime become the cooperative chief, and why was there? There was no change. Response. I still do not know what that. I still do not know anything about their separation of power. I was about 15 years old at the time when I joined the children's group. The cooperative chief was named Chun Pon, and the head of the children's group was named Thung. Question. How many days after the 17th April, the liberation day, were you called to go to Phnom Penh? Response. It was rather long, about a half year. Then they selected big children to dig out the three stamps at Breton, a letter, the cooperative chief selected the big children to stay at Kampung Trolai, and letter to Psa Kraum, and then they had us get on the track to Phnom Phen. I did not know how many children there were. There were about five GMC tracks to transport them. I am uncertain and do not remember well the transporters and those who received them. Question. Upon your arrival in Phnom Penh, where did they take you to? Response. They had us get at the concrete houses. They had us go to Bang Tumpun to raise pigs, grow vegetables, and later they had us undergo training at Stung Break Now, training on how to throw grenades and crawl and lie. This lasted for almost one year. Based on my estimation, there were about 500 children. I did not know where they came from. Food was also terrible. Trainers were the school committees. I do not remember where they came from. They were all soldiers from an unknown unit. The person who took us from Kampung Chinang was known as Ta Samrai, alias Ta Chan. He was not a trainer during that training. They had the adult trainees attend training on stabbing, wrestling, and Karate. Des armes blanches et, euh, le karaté. Question. Question. Were there any senior leaders any visiting during the training? Response. Yes. Réponse, oui. There were some, but Certains I do not remember their names. Leur nom. Question. Question. After spending Après one year there, where were you moved to? Envoyé? Response. Réponse. After spending one year in the training there, they sent us home to prepare our bags at home. 
some were happy at that time. When the truck departed, it was not heading to our houses, but transported us straight to Tulslai. They had us raise pigs and plant onions for one month on the western side of Tulslai. And later, they had us perform guard duties with the adult guards, and they had me guard the light prisoners alone in one room on the upper floor of a building on the north side. Upon my arrival, I saw them walking the prisoners who were blindfolded. All of us in the truck thought we were being brought to be detained, and then the truck turned along the fence. They had me stay behind in a place west of Dool Slain, outside the fence, next to Tumpung Road. At the beginning of my stay, they did not have me guard, but later, but later they had me guard with the adult guards in order to walk with and learn from them for about three weeks. Later, after the construction of the small cells, they had me guard the upper floor. I did not know all of those tips. They only told me what to do when the prisoners asked for permission to urinate and to defecate and to give them drinking water when they asked for it. They sprayed water towards the prisoners when they stank of urine. When I became familiar with all of those tasks, they had me get on the upper floor. There were two shifts per night and another two shifts per day. One group guarded during the night shift and another guarded during the day shift. I got it on the upper floor for three months. I took the ammo case for the prisoner when he or she wanted to defecate and threw it away for disposal. When the prisoners go dirty, I sprayed water to wash them. I entered the cell to do that and cleaned it up. The prisoners were always shackled, and the shackles were changed from one leg to another when the leg got injured. The prisoners ate the same rice as the military forces, two meals i.e. breakfast and dinner, but their meals were poorer. These prisoners were from mobile brigades, ministries, offices, factories, and the armed forces. This happened in 1976. In addition, Hoi was the one who inspected and checked whether or not the cells were clean, or the food sufficient, and if the prisoners reported that it was insufficient, I would be brought for re-education. I saw Hoi taking the prisoners out, but I dare not ask. There were also other people who came in and out to take prisoners, but I did not know their names. There were people who brought the prisoners in. Those people were who is subordinates. I knew T from our meal times. He was the person in charge of military and prisoners' list. I only know the names of prisoners who were in my room, but I do not know the names on the list. I saw those two times at the anniversaries, and he was accompanied by bodyguards. In 1976, he visited twice a week. I saw that from the building, but I did not know the reason for his visit. But later, they sent me to work in the rice paddy. After spending three months there, Hong, who was in my group, was arrested and executed. He asked me to inform his parents that he was going to be killed, and my cousin, Moon, was also arrested to be killed. Hong was guard group chief, and Moon transported vegetables for the economic unit. When the guard came to do his shift, he saw Moon being arrested and detained in the main office. I do not know the reason for his arrest and killing. Moon told me that Hong was arrested and sent to prison, and Moon was arrested the next night. The following day, they had me go to work in the rice paddy. Hong was arrested because his brother, Nam, was a former soldier in the Lunar regime. He was arrested and sent to Tulslai after the village chief found his pistol holster in his home village. Nam saw Hong while Hong was inspecting the prisoners. 
He shouted, Hong. And this made the group chief who was nearby know that they are siblings, and then Hong was also arrested. Moon told me that Hong was arrested and sent to prison when Moon returned from transporting vegetables, and later Moon was also arrested. At the main office where I saw Hong being arrested, I saw Hui, who was in the arrest unit with many of his subordinates. Question. When you were at Tools Line, were there any criticism or political meetings? Response. There was criticism in the group against anyone who fell asleep while on duty. It was chaired by a group chief whose name I do not remember. We went to the place which was south of Tools Line to learn about parties policies which stated that if the prisoner fled or died, we would be put in a prisoner's place. Ho was the trainer in the training session. Question. Besides the guard group, were there any other groups? Response. There was the defense unit, the interrogation unit, and the arrest unit. For example, as I guarded inside, it was called the interior defense group. The interior guards were not allowed to carry a gun. Question. Did you see those tortured any prisoners? Response. I did not know that. Question. Where were the interrogation places? Response. They gave a list of names when I was on duty. When a prisoner disappeared, they had me replace them. The prisoners were brought to the eastern side for interrogation. It was east of the current entrance. When they came to take the prisoners out, they wrote down the name of their prisoner. Since I am illiterate, I asked the prisoner to read and tell me whose name was it. In the evening, they brought the prisoner back. It was the interrogator who came and brought the prisoners out. I almost forgot everything. I know Chirac who used to come and bring in the prisoner. He was in the interrogation and typing unit. Question, how about guard duty? Response, guard duty was divided into four seats per day. I got it for one morning shift and one night shift. I got it for two shifts a day. Question. Did you ever see Doge assign any person to guard? Response, no, I did not. It was Tahoe who organized the group, and Hoi was under Tahoe. Question, who were the prisoners other than Hong? Response, yet I recall. There were many, but I did not know who they were. When I was there, a small number of prisoners disappeared. But a lot of prisoners disappeared after I left, and there were many incoming prisoners. I heard about that from those who were later sent to the rice paddy with me. Question, did you ever ask for permission to go home? Response, I never dared to ask, and even my relative who came to do sewing at Monibum Bridge did not dare ask to visit me because we were prohibited from contacting any person outside of our unit. That was the rule of S21. Anyone who dared to ask would be smashed. Question. Could you describe the event that happened after those three months? Response. Later, I was sent to have a rise at Breitkampu in Cartoon 14 along the glass factory road to Preso, and it was by the glass factory straight ahead. Many S21 staff members were moved there. The reason of my removal was related to Hong, who said that Moon and I were cousins. Question. At Breakampu, was the rice paddy work hard? Response. We worked at the rice paddy work all day and all night and had less rice than we had at S21. There were approximately 300 workers at that place. Paul was the chief there, but now he is dead. There were no visits by Luj Aho to that place. Question. Did you ever hear about Tay, who was the chief of Jiang Ai? Response. No, never. Question. How long did you stay at Breitkampu? Response. I stayed there until the liberation. Question. Do you recall other events other than these? Response. I was in a state of panic and I knew that after leaving that place, we would not be alive to see our families again. 
question. Why did they keep you for a long time but did not kill you? Response, perhaps the time had not yet arrived. Question, did you ever hear about Preso? Response, I used to hear that it was a prison in the old regime. Question, did you ever hear of Poisra? Response, no, never. Question. Question. After the harvesting, where was the rice taken to? Response. I saw the trucks transporting the rice out, but did not know where they took it to. Question. During your three months stay at S21, what did you observe regarding the prisoners? Response. I observed that prisoners were brought out after the interrogation was completed and I never saw them returning. Question. How many times did the prisoners wash? Response. They wash two times a day. They slept without a pillow, mosquito net or blanket. There were not so many mosquitoes on the upper floor, but there were many on the lower floor. Oh. Question. Question. Were there any injuries on the prisoner who had been interrogated? Response. Upon their return, they had bruises on their faces and cuts on their backs. I asked why you were bitten, and he or she said, he or she responded to all questions, but they still bit and asked him or her for the questions because they were afraid that he or she was concealing something. As for the beatings, that let cuts on the bags and bruises on the faces, I did not know whether this was authorized under the rules or whether it, this was an individual decision by the interrogator. Question. Before the liberation, was there any leader such as Lutz giving any instruction at Ray Gompe? Response. No. Question. Why were you aware of the Vietnamese coming? Response. I heard the sound of fighting. I saw people fleeing. I was hiding at a glass factory and met with the National Front army. Then I joined the army at Phnom Tamai and later served in the army at Bailan until the demobilization of the military prior to the Untak era. One copy of the written records was provided to this witness. The interview was completed at 12.30 p.m. of the same date. After being read aloud, the witness had no objections and agreed to sign a flash his thumbprint. After being read aloud, the witness Signature witness Kiopeo. The president. The president. This party, the graphia is now assigned to read the statement of Pehmat with the ERN 00186559263. The president, I notice the presence of the co-prosecutor. You may proceed. Can I, with your honours, leave just make a procedural point, your honour? Your honour, I wish to draw your attention to Rule 87.2 of the Internal Rules which govern the evidence that your honours shall use at the time of your judgment. And it states, uh, if I may read with your permission, any decision of the chamber shall be based only on evidence that has been put before the chamber and subjected to examination. In the light, your honours, of this provision, I would suggest it may be in the interest of justice that your honours may ask the parties if they have any objection to the admission of this evidence into uh, evidence, because clearly reading the words subjected to examination may mean that the parties have been asked and they have given their opinion. This is my respectful submission. It is in your honours' hands. Thank you.
Do other parties wish to make any observation in relation to the remarks made by the co-prosecutor in relation to the reading of the statement and that according to Rule 87.2, would you wish to make any comments? The Council, would you wish to make any observation in relation to the remark by the co-prosecutor? Mr. Kasabot, say the President, you take Mr. the floor. Mr. Kasabot, Mr. President, uh, according to my observation as the defense counsel for the accused, I would uh, suggest that uh, there should be a witness present at this court uh, so that Je his testimony can be challenged uh, or questions should be put uh, to him or her because uh, according to the statement before the co-investigating judges uh, the statement before the co-investigating judges or co-prosecutors might not be the same as what he or she is uh, having to say during this chamber because uh, we have observed that sometimes uh, the witness would uh, stand by the statement with, within this chamber rather than before the co-investigating judges or co-prosecutors. That's why I would prefer that the witness be called to be uh, to appear in the, uh, the court rather than having his or her statement read out. The President, uh, we note that Mr. Franz Horou is on his feet. Mr. President, I propose that we give the parole to the accused and make brief observations on this point. The president. The reasons raised uh, by the co-prosecutor. Le point soulevé par le co-procureur is relevant and that the chamber has no objection to what has been raised. However, we are not uh, following what has been raised uh, by the prosecutor in relation to the reading out of the statement of the witness because the witness already made uh, his or her statement before the co-investigating judges and the court officials uh, in the office of co-investigating judges are qualified uh, personnel and that uh, it can be used uh, to serve the judicial official piece of document uh, to be read out in the court and to be debated also. And our 
être intégré à une procédure de la même nature. L'objectif est d'assurer que les dépositions et les auditions de témoins ne sont pas présentes en relation peuvent être lus. Donc, un produit devant la chambre, la chambre would maintain that after each statement is read out, then parties to the proceedings will be given opportunity to make their observations in relation to the read out statements within these court hearings. And uh, according to the remark Et made uh, by Mr. Kasabo, the defense counsel, the chamber would like Maître to Kassabou also notify that uh, witnesses have been well selected mm, and chosen, and that uh, the chamber already well considered um, de ont which été witness is de manière be opportune called or which uh, whose statement uh, is to be read uh, out. Because the chamber um, has been working our best to make sure we can have the more expeditious uh, des proceedings qui être and trials. De par leur pertinence. Nous sommes soucieux ici de and, uh, we are very mindful la qualité de la procédure. Uh, Nous sommes soucieux to give testimony within the courtroom mm, and those who uh, do not need to be uh, to appear in the courtrooms and then only their statements uh, would be read out. Et dans ce cas -là, les procès verbaux and, uh, de Mr. Ces témoins Franz Quarou has made a comment that uh, the accused uh, would wish to make observation and that uh, if the chamber allows him to do so. However, the chamber would like to only allow the accused to make an observation to the statement that was uh, made after it is read out, uh, so the accused can choose to make observation according to each statement uh, being read out, or the accused can wait until all the statements have completely been read um, out, uh, and that uh, the accused is scheduled to just inclusively respond to the lump sum of que, those statements. Uh, I don't know, we don't know whether pas, which option uh, is preferred by the defense counsel or by the accused. Um, le conseil de, les conseils so de la défense, à savoir attendre que l'ensemble des procès-verbaux soient uh, lus President, ou alors à la fin de la lecture de chacun uh, des procès-verbaux de demander à l'accusé d'intervenir uh, pour nous faire part de ses observations. L'accusé, Monsieur le Président, permettez-moi de vous faire part de mes observations concernant la helpful for me le procès-verbal de l'histoire de témoins dont on vient de donner uh, lecture. Uh, it is, uh, I'm, I will be very grateful to uh, that uh, consideration. Que vous m'accordiez un temps de parole à la fin de la lecture de chaque procès verbal de l'édition de témoin. Work on a case by case basis, and that uh, by the end of all the statements read out, then the accused will be allowed to also make the final observation. So, the first statement has already been read out. So, do you wish to make any observation? And then I think we should now start with the co-prosecutors, and then followed by the defense lawyers and the defense lawyers. Nous allons commencer par inviter les coprocureurs à intervenir, puis nous passerons aux co-avocats des groupes de partis civils. Nous remarquons que si nous que le coprocureur souhaite intervenir. Le coprocureur international souhaiterait que ces procès-verbaux constituent des éléments de preuve. Le président. Madame Suzinski, vous souhaitez intervenir. Maître Suzinski, ce n'est pas ici une objection que je souhaite faire. Cependant, une suggestion. 
book Victims and Perpetrators, which is on the case file. Un ouvrage, Victimes and, uh, et uh, Auteurs, qui est vers, uh, versé au dossier Victims and Perpetrators uh, witness, en anglais. Et nous parlons uh, which is dans cet ouvrage de Q Chess. C'est un, ici un témoignage d'une demi-page uh, que l'on peut trouver à la cote 00079767 dans la version um, de ce document. Mentions the mentions uh, raids dans ce that passage. have been made by the the so-called catcher group and qui ont where été effectués par uh, Chinese um, people were dans le cadre uh, took part uh, in these raids and uh, this is an additional uh, fact à, and dans lequel on relate que des gens préparent à ces raids à ces attaques et ils nous this demanderont a donc statement related à la to this chambre witness. que cette Uh, ce passage relatif à ce témoin puisse être lu. Je vous remercie. The president, uh, the civil party le lawyer, président, the floor. J'invite le coavocat du groupe des partis civils. Civil party lawyer first. Euh, numéro 2 à prendre la parole. Mr. Kong Pisay. Mr. Kong Pisay. Mr. President, uh, thank Monsieur you very président, much. Your honours. Madame, Monsieur le juge. I would like to make a brief. <coughs> Observation in relation to the point the president has just raised une observation regarding rapide the document read de dire, in le Président, Khmer by the Greffier, which Khmer, the president said that it was the official document and that the French and the English version of the document has not been well uh, translated bien, and that the parties have et to pay attention to the on-site translation of the porter leur uh, concentrer leur attention statement. sur uh, ce I'm qui a été sure interprété de manière simultanée pendant l'audience. Uh, Je ne suis pas certain de savoir si cette interprétation instantanée de ce document pourra être à présent, va à présent être considérée comme faisant foi. And that uh, if the statements si are not uh, considered uh, as official yet in the English and French, then how could the accused uh, be allowed to make observation in relation to the version that are not yet official? Nous faire part the President, uh, sur des there are qui some pas discrepancies uh, in the President, il y statement, il but it is related to the technicality in the translation of the document Technique. Although we have noted uh, that the quality of translation has improved significantly already, but then the greffier uh, advised to read uh, rather slowly to make sure that uh, the final translation of the material will be made uh, and that uh, they will be well recorded in the transcripts and that we can make use of the materials uh, in the transcripts at a later date. Réétudierons la question des dépositions ultérieurement au procès verbal d'audience. Maître Roux, vous souhaitez intervenir. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je voulais répondre à l'observation de 
Maître Studzinski, euh, je crois so que Studzinski's nous sommes observation, ici en train de lire des procès-verbaux établis par des juges d'instruction, ce qui euh, est convenable par rapport à une judges, procédure judiciaire, well et je pense que l'on doit s'en tenir là pour les lectures, avec, comme je l'ai demandé, moment, possibilité with, pour l'accusé de faire de brèves observations. Brief observations. Par contre, However, nous avons tous un certain nombre de documents que nous souhaiterons verser au débat. J'imagine que quand les débats, well quand nous aurons entendu tous les témoins et avant que les débats se terminent, chaque partie va demander à ce que soit versé au débat un certain nombre de documents. C'est à ce moment-là que M. Studzinski pourra verser le document qu'elle entend. Mais la procédure que la Chambre a adoptée était une procédure permettant de gagner du temps. On ne fait pas venir le témoin pour pouvoir gagner du temps dans le procès. Alors n'en perdons pas. On a fait la lecture, donnant l'occasion so à l'accusé de faire quelques records. brefs commentaires so après chaque lecture, et on poursuit le travail. Voilà quelles sont les suggestions de la défense, M. le Président. Le président, Judge Levin, le président M. le juge Lavergne, je vous en prie. S'agissant de considérations de temps, nous en avons également discuté lors de réunions de mise en état et nous nous avions convenu de ce que la défense pourrait accepter de renoncer à la convocation d'un certain nombre de témoins à charge. Il me semble, mais peut-être est-ce un problème de traduction, il m'a semblé avoir entendu une demande de la part de la défense pour que certains témoins, enfin le témoin en tout cas dont on vient de donner lecture de la déposition, soit convoqué à l'audience. Donc, uh, il me semblerait important read, euh, pour euh, to la sécurité du débat so it seems to me que l'on sache directement où on en est. Euh, uh, Est-ce que cette the demande, est-ce qu'on doit we know exactly where que we are la renonciation qui avait été so faite n'est plus valide Ou est-ce qu'on doit considérer que la demande de convocation est à reconsidérer ou retirée Ou est-ce que la défense Monsieur le Président, Madame, Messieurs, pour répondre à la demande de, de Monsieur le juge Lavergne, la défense confirme ce qu'elle avait indiqué à l'audience de mise en état. Elle accepte qu'un certain nombre de témoins ne soient pas convoqués. Ce qui ne veut pas dire qu'elle accepte le contenu des déclarations. Et c'est la raison pour laquelle nous proposons cette procédure après chaque déclaration, donner la possibilité à l'accusé de dire les points sur lesquels il est en désaccord. Sous cette forme-là, And if Allez we proceed this way, I believe that we can move ahead. Je vous remercie. Thank you.
The President, uh, the President, we have heard uh, the request of the Civil Party Ms. Lawyer Ms. Group 2 and the observations of the Defense Council, Mr. Franz Corru. The, the Chamber uh, has now ruled to reject uh, the request uh, made by Civil Party Lawyer Group 2 to read out uh, another document with ERN00. As what she already said, uh, so according to this uh, document, we continue hearing, uh, reading the testimony of the now the statement of the witness before the co-investigating charges. If there is any other new documents, uh, the party would wish to request for the consideration of the chamber, then uh, you should raise this matter after the statements have been read out and that uh, during the time, if uh, it is uh, convenient to address this matter, um, and uh, we will deal with donné. these matters at the later date. Uh, and uh, we ce would like to allow the accused to make observations in relation to the statement of the observation s'agissant du procès verbal d'audition du témoin M. Q. Chase. M. l'accusé, je vous en prie. The accused, Accusé. Mr. President. Monsieur le Président. The statement of QJ in relation to the fact of S21 is accurate and possible. Uh, and S21 est, uh, in principle, uh, it is accepted. Uh, but there has been principe. a surplus information donc that uh, Cependant, there was a, in that statement that more than 500 people were taken by truck and that at S21 there were arrests but uh, when Kyoche said Hong and Moon were arrested it is out of my knowledge so it is just my clarification on the matter euh, il y aurait Thank des éclaircissements recherchés sur ces questions. Je vous remercie. Le président. Le président. Next. The greffier is now Nous demandons au greffier to read de another statement. donner lecture d'un du, autre procès verbal de déposition de témoins. The testimony of Il witness Pemat du de la déposition du témoin Pemat with the number. Il s'agit d'un document the 76 à la carte D 76 barre de fraction 2. Il s'agit d'un document D 76 en langue khmer. The, the Office of the Co-Investigating Judges, Criminal Case File, 0-2-14 of August 2006, Investigation Number 00118 of July 2007, ECCC, OCIJ, on the 18th of March 2008, at 2.30 p.m. in Trangpu village, Prek Chik Sap district, Mong Rusei district, Battambang province, we, Sim Soria and Fabian Luko, investigators of the extraordinary chambers, having been assigned by the rogatory letter of the co-investigating judges dated 11th of March 2008. Having seen the law on the establishment of the extraordinary chambers, 
dated 27 October, October 2004. 2004. Having seen rules 24, 28, 28 and 60 of the internal rules of the extraordinary chambers, with Mr. Nel Saman, sworn interpreter of the extraordinary chambers in the courts of Cambodia, have recorded the statements of Pes Mat, a witness who has provided the following information regarding his personal identity, last name Pes, first name Mat. Revolutionary name Li Tri, born in 1960s, correction, in 1960. The person has declared that he can read, write, and understand the Khmer language. We have notified uh, this person that this interview will be audio or video recorded. This person has told us that he has no relationship with the child persons or the civil parties. Correction, the accused or the civil parties. This person has taken an oath in accordance with the provisions of Rule 34 of the Internal Rules of the Extraordinary Chambers. We have notified this person of the right against self-incrimination in accordance with the provisions of Rule 28 of the Internal Rules of the Extraordinary Chambers and the rights to be represented. Questions and responses. Soria and Fabienne on the 17th of April 1975, where were you? What were you doing? Response. At that time, I was a teenager. I was building dams at Okandal in Chuk Sa sub-district, Kampung Tralat, district Kampung Chnang. Later, a teacher named Tano rounded up the children to go to Phnom Penh. Three children were selected in each sub-district, including Moxi Tim, whom I met at school, number five, working as a potato grower. In late 1975, I went to study military technique, surgeries and mine clearing at Military Technical School 703 in Bang Tumpun. In mid-1976, we were selected and divided into three groups. One group was assigned to defend at the border, one group was assigned to work at Presor, and another one was assigned to safeguard the city. I was in the group safeguarding the city, so I went to work in the Kamau prison, in the psychiatric hospital. I saw prisoners in that prison, but I didn't know if they were soldiers or civilians, and they were in leg shackles. I did not know who the prison chief was. I did not know how and where they were brought from for interrogation, but they disappeared. My battalion chief at that prison, Horn, was arrested and imprisoned, charged with treachery in late 1976. I went to Tulslang. Question. What were you assigned to do after you arrived at Tulslang? Response. Firstly, I cleaned the houses around Tulslang, cleaning one house after the other, because those houses were in a complete mess after the evacuation. My duty was to guard the houses, look after chickens and ducks and cook rice. Sometimes I guarded S21 externally, but sometimes I guarded internally. There was a shift rotation. My team leader was Heng. The one who was higher than Heng was Ni, the chief of the battalion. 
The one who was higher than me was Paul. The one who was higher than Paul was Peng. The one who was higher than Peng was Ta Ho, and those who were higher than Ta Ho were Chan and Doj. The last three people were chief, deputy chief, and member. They were very close to one another. I don't know whether or not they are alive. Question. How did you get your work assignments? Response. I got my work assignments via my team leader, who had a meeting once a week. I educated myself and learned about politics with an introduction by Peng. Question. Did you ever join a mass meeting of political education with the participation of Deutsch? Response. I learned at the political school to the west oui, of the prison. It was between the prison and Moni Wong Boulevard. It was attended by a lot of people, and Deutsch participated Donc, on the second and third days. Question. Question. What did you learn at the political school? Response. Response. They talked about educating ourselves to have a strong standpoint and about not conspiring with Vietnamese enemies. Question. Did you ever see anyone who conspired with Vietnamese enemies and was arrested and imprisoned at Tuol Slang? Response. I saw no return of those who had disappeared. I didn't know if they were charged as enemies or any other accusations except for Ni and Poj. Only those two I knew had been charged as traitors. Question. Did your team leader ever give you orders to trace and support on someone as an enemy? Correction, to report on someone as an enemy. Response. In the meeting, my team leader told me to inform him who were the activists and who talked to strangers. I knew that this order came from someone in the upper echelon. That's why my team leader raised it in the meeting. Question. Did you ever see Vietnamese prisoners during the period of internal and external guarding? Response. In 1977 to 1978, I saw a few Vietnamese with Vietnamese military uniforms. They were in shackles, but I didn't know from where they were brought. A few days later, when I was there on duty again, I saw that they were wounded, so I thought there must have been beatings and torture. After that, they disappeared. I didn't know where they were taken. I also saw a few Vietnamese women in casual clothes. Question. Were Vietnamese and Cambodian prisoners treated in the same way? Response. They were treated in the same way. No threats, no beating. It was the same principle. Question. Did you know there was a war between Cambodia and Vietnam at the time of the arrest of the Vietnamese? Response. I knew via my fellow guards that there was a war and Vietnamese from Prey Wang and Swai Rieng borders had been arrested, but Deutsch himself never said anything about the war in the meetings. Also, I heard there was a war and arrests of Vietnamese on the radio in the dining hall. Question. 
Did you ever see anyone reading the revolutionary flag? Response. I never read that book, but I saw other people reading it. They were team and group chiefs, but I don't remember their names. Question. Did you ever see Deutsch himself assigning the work directly in the prison or when the prisoners were taken out? Response. I never saw that. I only saw Deutsch on the road, driving a jeep. Question. Did you know about or were you involved in medical work? Response. I was on guard near Moxitim. I saw him cleaning wounds. Sometimes I helped to distribute medicine to the prisoners. I wasn't selected to be a medical practitioner because I couldn't read or write well. There was a clinic in the wooden building in front of Tuol Slang. I never saw blood being taken or experiments on humans, but I heard from my my fellow guards that blood was taken from correction, was taken for transfusions for the wounded. I heard that there was a place for preserving blood called Srang to the east of Tuol Slang prison. Question. Did you ever see any foreign prisoners? Response. I never saw any. Question. Question. Did you ever Have see prisoners killed in groups before the fall of Phnom Penh in 1979? Response. I never saw that because I was sent to work near the glass factory at Cheung Ek. My work was to pump water into the rice fields and to collect water weeds for fertilizer. One original or copy of the written statement was provided to this witness. The interview was completed at 4 p.m. on the same date. After it was read aloud, the witness had no objections and agreed to sign. Witness, Pes Mat. President, after hearing the reading of the statement of witness Pes Mat, are there any concerns or observations by the parties to the proceedings? Your Honours, the co-prosecutors have no objection to admission of this statement into evidence. The President, Counsel for the Civil Parties, do you have any observations to make regarding the statement read by the Greffier de Paris? None, Your Honours. Maître Werner, non, Monsieur Président. The President, Defense Counsel, do you have any observation la to make regarding the statement of Pehmat read by the Greffier? Nous préférons laisser la parole à l'accusé pour ses observations et bien entendu nous ne nous opposons pas à ce que ce procès verbal soit versé au débat. The accused, you have the opportunity to make your observation regarding the testimony of the witness of Pesmat, which was done before the investigators of the Office of the Co-Investigating Judges. You may proceed. The accused, Mr. President, the testimony of Pehmat is 
fundamentally appropriate. I would like to raise three points. One, I did make a request to Sector 31 in Kampong Chenang. The request for those people was not within the framework of 703 Division. It was made directly by S21. Regarding the infrastructure of S21, I already reported to the Chamber as well as to the co-investigating judges during the investigation period. For the S21 committee, I was the chairman, Ho was a deputy, and Nam Hui was a member, later all replaced by Paul. Regarding another case where Pehmat said he heard about the place where blood was preserved, I would like to clarify regarding this point. In his Statement, Pehmat said he had heard and actually in order to have a location appropriately established for blood preservation, it has to be done in a technical uh, details and nature. And if that was to be done, I had to report to make a request to the upper echelon, and I myself did not make such a request. And there was no place called Srasrong where it was alleged the blood was preserved. And this is my observation regarding this person's statement, Mr. President. President. It is now, now time for a break. The chamber will take a 20-minute break. And we will resume at 3 p.m. All rise. Cesar Greffier.